um, after this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now, there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool. Somebody say sheep market. Which is called the Hebrew tongue Bethesda. Say Bethesda. Bethesda. Having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folks, a blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus saith unto him, Rise. Take up thy bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and take and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. Amen. We want to speak to you around the subject. Wilt thou be made whole? Wilt thou be made whole? Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. God, we praise you. Oh, we glorify your name. And... Um, We pray, God, that you would go ahead and have your way, your word. um, You have given it to me, God, and I don't want to be in your way. I just want you to go ahead and speak through me. Help me to um, decrease myself, God, that you might be increased so that your people will hear you and not me. God, we thank you for this word. We thank you, Lord God, in advance for what it is going to do for us on this day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Wilt thou be made whole? <clears throat> like this man in the text, many of us today have found ourselves in waiting for one thing or another. And if you live long enough, you'll find that not everything comes or happens when you want them to. We may have said words that I believe this man probably was saying, uh, how long, Lord, how long? You know, have you ever been in a situation that was just taking just a little too long? And, and you're there and you don't understand the, when is it, God, that this thing is going to ever change? What is God, what, are, what, what, what am I doing here? How did I get here? And God, how long, God, how long? I don't know about you, but I've been in that place before. And I would ask God, how long am I going to have to be here? God, I don't understand. I don't understand my situation right now. But the question is, what do we do while we wait? Because many of us are waiting. But what is it that we do while we wait? We want to look at this man as an example of the things that we should not do. Okay. What, what, what we should not do. Amen. Now, Jesus saw this man lie. Let's, 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 let's just go back to, to the scripture. He says, after this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, a blind halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down <clears throat> at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, 
he saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? See, Jesus saw him lie, and he knew that this man had been there a long time. I want to say to you today, don't put all your eggs in one basket. <laughs> See, many of us, we have put all our, our eggs in one basket, and so we're waiting for this one thing to happen. There was certainly something he could have been doing with himself while he waited in, 30, in those 38 years. Something that he could have been doing, but everything was centered around that one thing. How many of us are just centered around this one thing that you want God to do for you? And God is saying to you, don't put all your eggs in one basket. I, I want you to understand that so many, there's so many other things that you could be doing in your life. I need for you to understand that it's just not one thing. Just because you want that one thing, that, 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 that is where only, only where your blessing is going to be. You got to know that God has so much more for you. Everything just centered around that one thing. Every morning you wake up, you thinking about that one thing, and then you go to sleep, and then you think about that one thing. Everything is is, is just centered around the same old thing every day. And and if God doesn't do that, I'm depressed. I'm I'm, I'm down. I, I can't get myself together. I can't think. I can't. I, I don't understand. I don't know what to do. I don't know if God. You know, if you don't do this, God. My Lord. Number two. Take a break and get around with some life. This man spent too much time with people like him. The Bible said this uh, this man he he laid he laid he laid at the pool, and there was a multitude of Sick folk, impotent folk, blind folk, folk, halt folk, lame people who are lame, withered folk, people paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. Everybody is just laying around waiting for this one thing. And God is saying, listen, you need to get around some people that that where that that that, that, that that's moving and shaking, you know. Some people that's got some life going on. So somebody who's going to speak some life into you, and somebody is going to who's going to help you and, and show you the way out of this thing. So, look, 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 look. You got to get to a place where you know you ain't you ain't got, I ain't got time to be sitting around all these people that's going through the same thing that I'm going through, and 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 I look over at you and and you down, and I look over at you and you down, and I. I look all in front of me and you're down. I need to get around some people who are going where I want to go. And, and see, that, that, that's what we got to understand is that that's what God will have for us to do. Get around some, some life. Get around some life. Because when, when, when you're around too many people that's going through the same thing that you're going through, what happens is they begin to drain you and they begin to take, suck the life out of you. You got to get around somebody who's got some energy. So come on, give me somebody that, that's got something going on for themselves and help me to see that this thing is real, but that God is real. And I know what God can do for me because I can see what he's doing in your life. He spent too much time around people like him. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He needed, to get, he needed to get around some life. He would, every day he would go there and he would lie down. And see, 
If you look at the scripture, go to verse 7. It says, the impotent man answered Jesus. Because Jesus said, will you be made whole? The impotent man answered him. He said, sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. He said, but while I am coming. That suggests to me. Come on. Oh, that the man could make some movement. Oh, he was, might have been paralyzed or whatever. But it, that, that, it, it suggests to me that, that he had some activity of his limbs some kind of way. He said, while I am coming, another step is down before me. And so maybe we're a little slower than the next person. Or, you know, maybe maybe we don't have it all together. Maybe we don't, but, but, but we've got something going on. And it's no reason for us to be sitting there lying at the pool every day. Waiting for the same old thing to happen. You're just lying there. Jesus saw him just lying there. you just sitting around just waiting. And see, the man, even if he, if he, even if he was slower than other people, he had a mouth. Yeah. Oh, he could, he could talk very well. Yeah. He could open up his mouth and say something to somebody else. He could, he could tell somebody some good stuff. He could tell, he could do something. Yeah. And God has said, there's too many of us lying around. <laughs> and I can't move God until you change this. Uh, go ahead. I can't do anything, God, until this one thing happens for me, God. Get around some life. Get around some life. Get around some life. Number three, don't become a complainer of the people that surround you. If you ain't got sense enough to get around some people who got some life, don't complain about the people that surround you. Don't, don't complain about them. Jesus asked him, wilt thou be made whole? Instead of him saying, oh, yes, yes, I'll be made whole, he started complaining about the people. <laughs> okay. okay, let's look at what he said. <laughs> Jesus said, will he be made whole? In verse 7, the man, the man answered him, him, him said, sir, I ain't got no man when the water is troubled, to put me into that pool. First of all, he's saying got nobody around me. None of these, none of these low life, blankety blanker blankers <laughs> around me will help me, Jesus. Not one of them. And let me say, let me say this. He didn't even know it was Jesus talking to him. First of all, he didn't know that. So he just figured, this man, this man is coming to me and asking me. He didn't, he didn't say to Jesus. He just said, you know, I, no, I ain't here. I ain't nobody. Because I guess, you know, that's the way it was. When, when anybody walked up to him to talk to him, he started talking about the people and how, won't nobody help me. Ain't nobody trying to help me. They see that I need help. And they, 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 they go running over, stepping over me. They, 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 don't, they don't try to help me. And, and so he, 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 you know, became a complainer of the people around him because he expected something from the people that the people couldn't even give to him. The people needed help. They needed somebody to help them. And you were expecting them to help you? They couldn't help him. How long, Lord, how long? How many of us have said that? Lord, how long? Jesus, this man was there for 38 years. And I believe it in, 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 in that he was saying in his spirit, Lord, how long? How long? But let's go back to verse, um, verse 1. It says, after this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. All right? Y'all making a picture in your mind, Jesus? 
You know, this is a feast of the Jews. They had they had three three feasts that they that they were were supposed to come to Jerusalem. The men, the Jews, Jewish men, and this was one of them. And Jesus came up to Jerusalem, and he sa- it says now. There is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called the Hebrew tongue. In the Hebrew tongue, um, Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folks. So get a picture in your mind of what's going on here. A bunch of sick folk laying in this po- at, around this pool, and they're waiting for the waters. You know, this angel was supposed to come and, and come down into the water. And when he came, he would trouble that water and, and healing would begin to take place. But it was only for the first person who got in the water. Come on now. Only one person yeah. at, at a season. Only one person a season. <laughs> wow. You know, and so can you imagine the scrambling, the blind people trying to find the water and, and the lame people trying to, everybody trying to, bumping into each other, trying to... <laughs> As soon as they saw the rumbling, as soon as they heard the rumbling of that water, all heck broke, broke loose around that pool. Can you imagine that? Because people wanted to get healed. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. And whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole, and whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there, which had a long time in, the, in, the, in that case. And he saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? So you got the picture, right? So the scripture says that the pool was by the sheep market. Come on, come on, yes. Which tells us that when Jesus came into Jerusalem, he had stopped by the sheep market. And just happened to look over at the pool and therefore saw the impotent man. But when, what we, what we must understand about the sheep market is that it was through the sheep gate that lambs and sheep were brought to the temple in which they were offered. Jesus, the Son of God. Come on who would become the lamb who was offered for the sake of our sins, walked through the sheep gate, and he looked over at the pool of Bethesda, which means the house of grace, the house of mercy, and he began to demonstrate what was to come. come That when he would shed his own blood, forgiveness and Healing and restoration would be released and all who wanted it would be able to receive it. No longer bound. See, because he came to destroy the works of the devil. How long, Lord, how long? The Lord is saying it doesn't matter how long. If you want it, is here for you today. He said it doesn't matter how long you went through what you went through or you're going through what you're going through. Today is the day of your blessing. The big question is, will you be made whole? Are you willing to be made whole? And I thought about that question and I found something that will really help us to understand what Jesus is saying about this. Will you be made whole? Um, it says God doesn't ask us questions because he lacks information. <laughs> he doesn't. He really doesn't. The question is a gift to lead our thoughts in the right direction. Possibly... The healing brings with it a price that should be considered. Come on now. So, it's a price like this. It says, like, like, like do you want to leave all your dependencies? And so the man is laying at the pool, right? 
And Jesus says, will you be made whole? The man is laying there every day, and he's dependent on everybody. He's dependent on, and he said, okay, do, do you really want to be made whole? He says, um, do you want to leave all your dependencies? That's, that's one. Um, uh, do you want to walk all day? Do you want, I mean, excuse me, do you want to work all day? Because, you know, once you get healed, you're going you to have to get a job. <laughs> Are you willing to be made whole? Are you willing to be made whole here today? Because you're saying, how long, Lord? I, oh, God, how long am I going to remain in this situation? He said, okay, um, I'm here, I'm here. I'm, the man is here. And uh, I want you to understand some things right here. I just got to ask you a quick question before I, I give you what you need right here. I want to know, are you willing to be made whole? My God. It says, do you want to leave behind all excuses and take on the full responsibilities of life? Many of our desperate prayers to God have a price in their answer. Amen. This scripture Amen. can apply not only to those with physical disabilities, but all of our emotional and spiritual ones as well. Yes, Jesus asked us all, wilt thou be made whole? Do you really want the new and harder job? Or is it more convenient to complain about money? Do you want to leave loneliness behind? And take on the joy and responsibility of a relationship with a person who will heal the isolation, but also force us to alter our selfish lifestyle. Amen. <laughs> when I read that, I, I, I felt something go boom, 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 boom. boom. <laughs> It's beating me all up, right? Because I, when I thought about that, I said, God, he's talking, he's talking about me. God. Are you talking about me? Because as I look back over my life and I think things over, I, I said, God, that was me. Because I remember it was a time in my life when I said, God, I didn't even know God like that. I didn't even know. I really, you know, I just, I would pray and I didn't really know, you know, how he really answered. I didn't know him. I wasn't saved. But I would, you know, I would pray to God. And I was like, God, you know, how long, God, am I going to go through this? How long? In and out of bad relationships and I was disgusted and busted and just, just feeling like life was just over for me. And I'd be like, God, how long, God, how long, God, am I going to be in this situation, God? And then one day God came my way. <laughs> yeah. And then God started asking me questions. He said, well, you know what? He said, I'm, I'm ready, I'm ready to, to move you out of this situation. I'm ready to change your season. But I need for you to un ask, answer me one question. Will you be made whole? Are you willing to be made whole? I said, God, I don't understand. I don't understand. God said, well, this, this, you know, you're, you're crying about relationships, and, and I'm sending you somebody in your life. I'm going to send you somebody who's going to change your whole lifestyle. And I'm going to send you somebody, and when I send this person, you'll you, you understand what I'm about to do. And he, he, he began to show me, and God sent me a man who is my husband today who told me before I... All right, I knew that was what happened, right? <laughs> he sent me. He sent this man in my life. I was complaining, talking about, Lord God, how long, how long? I was in bad relationships, and the enemy was just doing a trick on my mind, and he had me thinking that life was over. And I kept saying, God, how long, how long, how long? And then God began to move in my life. He said, you know, I, 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 you know just, just all of a sudden, God just started to change things in my life. And he said, he, he, he brought this man into my life, you know. And then when he brought him into my life, the man said to me that the God is calling him to preach. And I said, I don't, I don't understand this. I mean, God, you, you're bringing this man in my life, a man who, who's talking about he's called to preach. And God, not, not the way that I live. I, I can't, God, I, I, there's no way that I can be, 
I can be a preacher's wife. There's no way, God. I don't want this life. So, God, what are you saying? I got to change this. I got to change that. God, I got to do this. I got to do that. And he said, will thou be made whole? <laughs> I said, God, I, I don't know you like that, God. <laughs> and I'm not sure if I want to give up this lifestyle. I, I, you know, <laughs> y'all know sin is, 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 is fun. It's good for us. And, and I, I was sinning. I was sinning going straight to hell. And, I mean, I, I was having fun. I thought I was having a wonderful lifestyle, lifetime. I was just, whoa, boy, I was just having a ball. But then when I got into those relationships, those relationships um, helped me to realize that I needed God in my life. And, and it helped me to realize that I, 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 I needed some, a change in my life. I needed something different. And when God said, will you be made whole? I said, God, you know, I don't know you like that. <laughs> but, you know, if, if this is what you want, if you, if you, if, I, I, I'll trust you, God. Trust I ain't never walked that walk before. Don't know nothing about it. Don't understand it. But this man is going to be a preacher. That means I'm going to be the wife of a preacher. Preacher's wife. That means... <laughs> <laughs> that means that you know so many things are going to have to change my life is going to have to change God I, I, I don't understand what you're trying to do with me God and God said well, will you be are you willing Are you willing? And you know, it was a it was a it was a faith walk, and I didn't even know how to to walk by faith. But I walked, I stepped into that thing, and before I knew it, God began to change stuff. And see, sometimes people think that we need to change things, you know, on our own and change them before. Before we come to church, change before we get saved, and we got to do all this changing. But let me tell you something. If you can trust God, God will come to you just like he came to that man and just like he came to me. And he, if you can say to him, okay, God, I'm willing. I, I'm, I'm willing to let, I'm, I'm, I'm willing, uh, um, you know, to take the harder job. I'm, I'm willing to leave loneliness behind. And take on the joy and responsibility of a relationship with a person who will heal. That's what I was looking for, for somebody to heal their isolation. I, I was looking for love. I was looking for somebody to treat me like a woman was supposed to be treated. I was looking for that. But I, I didn't realize that there was a but that came with that. But also forced us to alter our selfish lifestyle. Some of us don't want to trust God. When he said, when, do you really want to be, are you willing? Are you really willing? Because if you're willing, like he did with that man out there in that pool, on the, at that pool, he told that man, after he said to him, are you willing? He said, will you be made whole? And the impotent man began to explain to him that he had nobody to throw him in the pool. Let me tell you something. Jesus said to him, rise up, take up your bed, and walk. See, the good thing about this man was that he was willing. Even though he was complaining, and even though he had a, he was willing. And when Jesus felt that, when Jesus saw that he was willing, Jesus said to him, rise up and take up your bed, and then I want you to walk. And immediately the scripture says the man was made whole and took his bed and walked. You've been asking God how long. But he's saying to you, are you willing to be made whole? 
See, you can keep yourself from getting your blessing. If, if you're not willing to go all the way with God, then, you know, then God will say, I, I guess Jesus, if, if the man would have said no, Jesus would have said, okay, then. Because there was a whole lot of other impotent folk and blind folk who needed to be healed that day. And he would have probably turned around and said, okay, well, are you willing? The question is, are you willing to trust God? I was afraid. I was so scared. I didn't know. It was like I really stepped out on some water and just started walking. And I just trusted God every step of the way. I didn't know his plans, but the scripture says, I know the plans I have for you. And Jesus knew this man was laying there for 30 years eight years back and forth coming back and forth and laying there for 38 years I want to say to you today that Jesus knows how long you've been in your situation he knows it it ain't none of that caught him by surprise what you're going through and he's saying listen I'm coming up in your life just like I came up in his I was coming in minding my business I came through the sheep gate came through the sheep gate and took a look over at the house of mercy, the house of grace. Let me tell you something. You're in the house of mercy, the house of grace. We all need Jesus. We all are going through some stuff. And Jesus is saying, I am the door. I am the gate. And if you really seriously want this thing, I challenge you today. Be made whole. Be, be willing to be made whole. I'm, when I say be made whole, that means, you know, you're willing to just open up your whole life to, to God and say, God, have your way. Wow. This, this is fun. This is really a lot of fun. I'm, I enjoy this. I really do enjoy this. I really do. But God, you have, you're showing me something different, something new that you really want to do in my life. And you came to me. God came to me. I was calling on him and everything, but then he came to me. And stuff started to happen. And I said, God, okay, I trust you. I don't know where this is going to lead me, but if I'm with you, I know it's got to be good. I'm here to let y'all know. It's been real good. God will not let you down. Oh, he ain't going to let you down, okay? He will not let you down. Every day was a faith walk. That man jumped up and he started walking. You know what? I want to let y'all know, everybody ain't going to be happy about your faith walk. He jumped up and started walking, and the people didn't, they weren't excited about him walking. They were mad because he was walking with his mat on his back. Because they said it was on the Sabbath day. Why? Who, what are you doing walking with your Sabbath, with your mat on your back? The man got healed. He was, he was, he was 38 years down in, in the gutter. And now he's healed and he's walking. Somebody should have been praising God. Somebody should have been giving God all the glory and all the praise and all the honor. Everybody ain't going to be happy. Folks going to be looking at you and saying all kinds of foolishness and talking about you making this faith walk. This is ridiculous. What y'all doing? Ha, 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 ha. Look at you. My friends couldn't understand me. Oh, you girl, you want to be married to a preacher? <laughs> Trying to scare me out of it. You sure you want to do that? Because, <laughs> see, we, could, we wouldn't be able to really, like, hang like we used to hang, see. <laughs> you know. I didn't want to cut them loose, but if you wasn't coming this way, I, I, 
had to cut you loose. I had to, you know. I mean, we're still friends today. But I had to make a decision. I had to make a decision. And I was feeling that in my, I was feeling it. I knew God was talking to me. I knew God was doing something. I knew God was making a change in my life. And Pastor said that this morning. God, when he woke up, he felt the Spirit of the Lord say to him, a new season and a new day. God's got a new season and a new day for somebody. The question is, are you willing to be made whole? Let us all stand.